Hello. Ooh. There we go. Back in the middle. All right. Fine. Um, hi. Uh, this is Ask Dr. Ben. I study coronaviruses for a living, and I have done since long before this pandemic. And so I'm going to try to answer reader questions with science. Reader, watcher, whatever. Viewer, viewer questions. There we go. Um, next question is from Kat. Hello again, Kat. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hello, cat. <laughs> uh, hello to Ben and Nicola. I've brought you, uh, to you another article that looks very interesting, a study about the uh, Brady Bunch effect, which is not the real term. It's the Brady Kynan effect. Um, uh, but that's what I keep thinking of that over and over again and thinking of the Brady Bunch. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Why not? Brady Bunch effect. Yeah. Um, the idea is that the Brady-Kynan effect, like a Brady-Kynan storm is what one of the papers mentions, is um, behind various issues that you see in COVID patients. And yeah, uh, the question is, what do you think? Well, all right. I looked it up. If there is somebody in the channel, and I, I know there's some, yeah, that have more clinical experience, you would be better at answering this question, I think. I'll give you the perspective that I can give you, yeah. But um, I'm a non-specialist when it comes to physiology, yeah. Gotta, yeah, gotta admit, yeah. <laughs> like, systems are far too big. Uh, just give me little proteins and stuff, and then I can handle it, yeah. My brain doesn't overheat. Um, so there's a link to it. Um, it is a paper, and there are actually several papers out there by different people that are looking at this as a potential way to explain everything and honestly i see a lot of these papers with you know factor x explains all the problems with covid and it could it totally could there are a lot of ways that basically pushing one or two buttons inside the body could lead to the series of or at least most of the effects that you see with SARS-CoV-2 this is one of them it's not the only one but it's one of them, so yeah, maybe. I don't know. Why not? <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody's trying to do this. Everybody's trying to find you know the one true ring to unite them all or whatever. And uh, I, I don't know. It, it may be out there, but this is... So it's a news article. It starts off by saying that a supercomputer found this. And so right there, it makes you feel a little inferior, doesn't it? Yeah, because you, you're not a supercomputer. I'm not a supercomputer. Yeah, why are we even talking about this? Game over, right? All I mean is that they've used a regular computer <laughs> running normal programs to analyze... Um, uh, these things called pathways. And this is something that, um, yeah, you can do with little tiny PCs and web tools, and it doesn't take a lot of equipment. There was a time, maybe 15 years ago, when, you know, an analysis like this would be almost unheard of. Um, now, I don't know, it's a thing that regular people in that have some science knowledge can do. So don't be, don't be awed by the supercomputer. There we go. That's our first big point. <laughs> um, second point is that, yeah, Brady-Kynan is not directly in, but is connected to what's called the renin-angiotensin system. Why do we care about that? Because um, the renin-angiotensin system involves angiotensin converting enzyme 1 and 2, and these little angiotensins, they get converted to different forms, and they'll make um, your uh, veins and arteries close up or uh, open out and kind of slow things down or speed things up depending on which form they are in. So it's a way that we control our blood pressure basically. Um, and so it's saying that if you ended up with an overload of bradykinin because you had problems with regular ACE protein, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's complicated. The connection to the virus is that the virus binds to ACE2 protein, which is different from the ACE protein. That's like ACE1. One, yeah, they convert different forms of the same uh, protein. Yeah, they're they're like members of the same assembly line, but you know they're not doing the same job. They're not turning the same screw. They're doing different jobs, um, and so the virus is going to bind to ACE two toward the end of the assembly line, and it is going to cause there to be a little bit less ACE two around because the virus has bound to it in this way. Um, Bradykinin is only connected to the ACE1 side, but they're saying that you might have a backlog of too much 
stuff because ACE2 is not doing its job. And so all the products that ACE2 should be cutting, you know, all those little screws that should be turning on the assembly line aren't going to get turned. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, because of that, the backlog is going to lead just like in a traffic jam back to the point where you end up with highly um, with high blood pressure, with dysregulated blood pressure, with damage in the brain and heart. And it could be, but I don't think that's the best explanation. And uh, this was an early theory in COVID, was that um, uh, ACE inhibitors, uh, things that block ACE1, might be useful in treating COVID, or that you know the uh, renin angiotensin system might be super involved uh, here. So far, that has not been borne out in uh, the things that I've read. There's a little bit of involvement, but not as much as far as I have been able to gather from the papers. So I think this is something that could happen, might happen in a few people. I don't see strong evidence that it happens in a lot of people. But once again, if we've got an actual uh, person with some kind of physiology experience, by all means, please weigh in. Let me know because, uh, yeah, we're outside the little bubble where I can uh, I can operate comfortably. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, so yeah, it's a good question. Um, I don't think you have to worry about the Brady Bunch. I've got the song stuck in my head now. I hope that doesn't happen to you. And if it does, you're supposed to uh, hum the girl from Ipanema. That's supposed to clear everything out. There was an NPR story on that. So yeah, you know it's legit. <laughs> Thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.